scientists like to use models to help explain things and make them more simple to understand. They've developed the particle model to help understand the properties of matter. So to understand the particle model, we firstly need to be aware of what we mean by matter. So what is matter? Well, matter is any substance that has mass and takes up space. So any substance that has mass and takes up space is matter. And the particle model is about matter. For the, the particle model has got three parts. Number one, that all matter is made of particles. So what then are particles? Well, particles are microscopically tiny little balls of matter that we can't divide up anymore and we can't sort of squeeze them or squash them. So they're tiny and they're incompressible. We can't squeeze them anymore and they're indivisible. That means we can't divide them up anymore. Particles are the building block of all matter. That's the first one. The second one is that particles are actually attracted to each other. These particles are in contact with each other and they stay together. The third thing is that the particles are constantly moving. These particles are constantly moving. All particles are always constantly moving. So in a solid, for example, here is a solid, and whilst the particles are totally packed very, very close to each other and in contact, they still vibrate on, uh, on the spot there. So they're always constantly vibrating. So we can use the particle model to understand some properties of matter and the phases of matter, solids, liquids and gases. So firstly with solids, the particles are in contact with each other and they're very, very tightly packed together. So much so that the particles can't move around, but they are vibrating on the spot. If we were to add some heat to this beaker of solid, um, then it's going to make the particles vibrate faster. And when they're vibrating faster, they need to take up a little bit more room. This is why matter expands when it's heated. If we were to add even more heat to it, then it makes the particles allow them to actually be able to move around and change position. And that's when it becomes a liquid. And a liquid, of course, takes up the shape of the container in which it's in. The particles are still very, very close together and they're still in contact with each other, but they're allowed to move around because it's a fluid. If we were to add even more heat to it, then some of the particles actually break away from the liquid and form into a gas, and they're going to then go up into the atmosphere. So they'll they move in a straight line and unless they actually come into contact with something. So if they hit the side of the beaker, they're going to bounce off. And so they all spread out. The thing with a, um, a gas is there's a much bigger distance between each of the particles so that you're able to actually compress a gas and squeeze it back together again and take that, the space out between them. So that's what a gas is. There's a big gap in between them. The particles aren't actually in contact with each other. So we can use the particle model to understand the different phases of matter.